I'm back, baby. Yes, indeed, folks. We are back again. Lampini here. We missed last week. I missed making videos for you guys. But today, we are back with more NFL prediction videos. The 2024 season is about to start. We got tons of great storylines for you guys. Seeing if the Chiefs can three-peat. See if some of these other teams can make that final step to a Lombardi. And we're going to get right into it with opening day, which is going to be very, very, very exciting. I cannot wait. We have the Baltimore Ravens, 13-4, and four, at the Kansas City Chiefs, 11-6. and six. So this is obviously a rematch from the AFC Conference Championship last year, where the Chiefs bested the Ravens. Um, the Ravens have been a team that have consistently been at the NFL's top, but no one's really been taking them seriously because they can't get it done in the postseason. Making the conference championship is actually the, the furthest the Ravens have been since they won the Super Bowl in 2012. Um, Lamar Jackson is a two-time MVP. Um, he was MVP last year, but, I mean, again, like, he does not have a very good record in the postseason. So that remains to be seen. Patrick Mahomes is the exact opposite. He, right now, in the six years that he's been a starter, has, has pretty much established himself as a top 10 all-time quarterback. When you think about it, he started in this league six times. In those six years, he's made the conference championship at least every single year. In those six years, he's made it to the Super Bowl four times. He's won it three times. He has three Super Bowl MVPs, two league MVPs. Some Hall of Famers only have one MVP and maybe one ring. So what Mahomes is doing is unbelievable. He is a top 10 all time, all time, and he's not even 30 years old yet. So. Pretty much, we're looking to see if he is going to be the new greatest all-time quarterback right next to Tom Brady, Joe Montana, and all those guys. Um, they, the Chiefs had an off regular season last year, but they always seem to find a way to win in the postseason. They had to go 4-0. They beat the Dolphins, beat the Ravens in the conference championship, and they beat San Francisco. They needed a clutch drive. Mahomes just pulls it out whenever he needs to. But we're not talking about the postseason. This is the regular season. And the Ravens had the best record in the regular season last year. They had like a 200-point differential, which was the highest in the entire league. But again, no one really took them seriously because they don't really have that respect in the postseason. Who is going to win this game? I think it's going to go either way. I think either team winning, either team losing, it's not going to be a mark on them. I think it's going to be a nip-and-tuck, drag-out match. But it's going to be very, very interesting to see who ends up winning. I think because it's at Arrowhead, because the Chiefs are the reigning champions, I am going to go with Chiefs, but I think the Ravens are going to bounce back in these upcoming games. Next up, we have the Green Bay Packers, 9-8, and eight, at the Philadelphia Eagles, 11-6. and six. The Eagles um, and the Packers are two very different teams right now. The Packers are a very young team. They exceeded expectations, making it to the divisional round of the playoffs. Jordan Love made that first step as a starter. He threw for over 30 touchdowns. He's on one of my fantasy leagues. Um, Jordan Love looks like he's going to be their guy going forward. And the Packers seem to just have so much stability that it's very easy for them to just have a guy sit for a couple years and then bring him in when they need to. They have a very young team. They have a wide receiver room by committee. There's no big stars so they can spread the ball out. They got Josh Jacobs at running back, which um, I think is a very, very good option. He's shown that he gets a lot of carries. Will he decline massively because he's on a new team now? I don't know. Uh, but it's entirely possible. But 9-8, and eight, I think Green Bay is one of those teams that um, a lot of people are – they're like the Texans where they're a young team that people are expecting are going to take that next um, step forward. But the divisional round is, you know, a high bar for Jordan Love to come back on. So it'll be interesting to see if he can do it. As for the Eagles, the Eagles um, in 2022 were – they looked like they were Super Bowl or bust. They were doing everything right. They had a strong defense, a strong offense. Jalen Hurts was an MVP contender. But in 2023, they started 9-1, and I want to say, 8-1. and And they just fell apart at the end of the season. And I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. Because they played an uninspiring game against Tampa Bay in the wild card game. And they ended up losing. They went 2-6. and six, Or they didn't go 2-6, and six, sorry. They pretty much lost out. I've never seen a team give up on their coach more than the Eagles did at the end of that season. And I think this is a bigger issue. I think head, Nick Sirianni is not their head coach. I think the Eagles have all the talent in the world. I think they're going to do all right. But 
That collapse at the end of the season was incredibly concerning. And I don't understand why people still have them winning the division. I guess it's because the NFC East is so weak, but I could very easily see the Eagles going like 0-4 or like 2-6 and and Nick Sirianni gets fired midseason and this just ends up being a lost, <clears throat> a lost year for the Eagles. Again, they have a lot of talent on the team. They just got Saquon Barkley. Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, will they be able to still do the tush push without Jason Kelsey? Um, I don't know. They're losing more than they're gaining in my opinion. So, um, like I said, it's going to be very interesting. I could very easily see the Packers upsetting the Eagles here. Um, so, and there's another thing I'm going to do this year is I'm going to keep track of my predictions to see how many of these I score. And I'll give you guys a little record path at the end of the year, but at the end of the, the season, but for this game, I'm going to go with the Packers and a stunning upset on the road. So next up, we have the Washington Commanders at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am a Commanders fan, unfortunately. Um, but they are going to be better this year. They, they did something that a lot of teams are very afraid to do, and they just fully bottomed out. They were 4-13. They had a minus 189 point differential, which was not only the worst in the entire NFL, but it's one of the worst that the Washington Redskins, Washington Commanders, the Washington football team has ever had. So this is historically one of the worst teams that Washington has ever fielded. Um, it was a necessary evil. It, it pretty much forced a full-on rebuild. This is the first head coach of the Josh Harris era as owner, the first new GM in Jason, um, Jason Peters. Everything about this team is new. From the ground up, it's not Dan Snyder's team anymore. We are a complete new team. And that's all I could really hope for. Bad ownership is very hard to overcome in this league. And I think now that we have a new owner, we're going to get somewhere. But it's all going to be dependent on how Jaden Daniels does. Now, I am glad that we picked Jaden Daniels because, because he had an extra year in college. The expectation is he's going to be able to come in here and play well. He's not going to need to sit on the bench. He's going to be a very plug-and-play player like Caleb Williams is. I'm hoping that's what he's going to be able to be. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping. We have a lot of other big, big acquisitions. We got Austin Eckler as our backup running back. Bobby Wagner led the league in tackles last year at the age of 33, so I don't think he's gone at all. We got Jeremy Chin at quarterback. Um, there was another Panthers linebacker we got. Um, I think we had a pretty good draft, but again, we won't know how good the draft is until they start playing, but I'm glad we got that tight end. I'm glad we got that other cornerback. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think this was a very positive draft on our part. Um, we're going to be better. There's no way we're going to be a four-win team again, but I just cannot, I just don't want us to be another seven and 10, eight and nine team. That might be what we end up being, but I want us to really make a significant stride. We haven't won double-digit season since 2012. I would love to see it. As for Tampa Bay, they really surprised a lot of people. Um, I actually made a predictions video for last year that was never released because I wasn't able to get the, um, the format down. But I thought Tampa Bay was going to be one of the worst teams in the league. They proved me wrong. Baker Mayfield did a very good job revitalizing his career. Mike Evans is Mike Evans. He's probably the best offensive player the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have ever had. Um, excluding Tom Brady, but Mike Evans is probably the best player they've ever had. He's most likely going to be going into the Hall of Fame with his consistency and the fact that he's showing no signs of slowing down. In this game, though, I would love to see the Commanders win, but it's at Tampa Bay. Unless the Commanders come in firing on all cylinders and we see a new team, I'm going to be going with Tampa Bay. I'm going with my head, not with my gut, and I'm going with the Buccaneers. So next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, both of these teams have brand new quarterbacks. The Falcons have Kirk Cousins as their starter and Michael Penix as their, um, the, their rookie who's not starting yet, who's going to take the reins from, from Kirk Cousins whenever he, he lets it go. I'm like everyone else. I don't know why they made that decision. Maybe they just wanted insurance, but one of the, one of the wildest picks of the entire draft. But they have a lot of talent on their team that they just weren't able to utilize, like Drake London, Kyle Pitts. A lot of those guys are talented players that the Falcons just couldn't take advantage of because they had freaking Desmond Ritter as their quarterback. Um, when the Commanders played the Falcons last year, that's when I really saw how bad Desmond Ritter is. Like, he was the whole reason we won that game. He was terrible. So, Kirk Cousins is a solid enough quarterback 
who has really got a bad shake in his career. He was great for us in Washington. He was great in the Vikings. He just had no postseason success. But I do think he's an above-average quarterback. You can't throw 35 touchdowns and less than 10 interceptions and not be a bad, not be a good quarterback. The Steelers, they were 10 and 7 last year. They are in their own little purgatory. Their elite defense will scratch them by, but they need solid quarterback play. And I had a, um, a football analyst, Mr. Barry, on YouTube. Many of you guys hopefully know who he is, but he said that this Russell Wilson season is going to be like a Donovan, Donovan McNabb Viking season where he plays a couple games, plays badly, and then off he pops. The Russell Wilson era in the NFL is over. This is Russell Wilson's very last chance. He had a good season with Denver last year. It was like 26 touchdowns, five interceptions, something like that. Those numbers don't mean anything if your team is terrible, which is what the Broncos were. Um, so this is his last chance. Um, the good news for the Steelers is they got themselves some good insurance in Justin Fields. I don't know how far along he is in his passing, but if any team can get him right, it's the Steelers, and he has all the talent in the world. The Steelers have a good running game. The Steelers play ugly football, but they win football games. Who's going to win this one? I think that Kirk Cousins is going to be on full display in this game. I do think the Falcons are going to win at home. And I think it's just going to be Kirk Cousins showing everyone that he is still a premier quarterback in the league. He's going to utilize his weapons and they're going to win the game. I think it's going to be close, but I do think that Kirk Cousins is going to pull it out. This next one is going to be a bit easy. I'm going to try and glance over it. The, the Arizona Cardinals, 4-13. and at the Buffalo Bills, 11-6. and six. The Cardinals are in full rebuild mode. Last year was kind of a lost season because they lost Kyler Murray for half the season, but Kyler Murray did do well when he came back, um, but they are still a very young, inexperienced team. Um, so I don't think the Cardinals are going to do too much this year. They're probably still going to be one of the worst teams in the league. Um, conversely, the Buffalo Bills are contenders like they always are. They, they've made the playoffs the last five years, they made the conference championship in 2020, got blown out by the Chiefs. They have now lost three times in the postseason to the Chiefs. They need to get over this hump because they are not going to go to the Super Bowl without getting through the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes has shown that in the last six years. You are going to have to get at least past the conference championship to beat the Chiefs. Fun fact, there are only two quarterbacks that have beaten Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. It was Tom Brady two times and Joe Burrow. Josh Allen has yet to beat him in the, in the Super Bowl or the postseason. Um, I'm not expecting much from this game. I think the Bills are going to win. They are one of the best teams in the league right now. That is without question. Their big question mark is, can they get it done in the playoffs? So we won't know that until January. But right now, it's going to be the Bills. Next up, we have the Tennessee Titans at the Chicago Bears. Now, uh, the Bears have made a lot of moves taking advantage of all the draft capital they got from the Carolina Panthers. They got Kelly Williams. They got Romeo Duze. Um, they got a lot of great players to fully rebuild their team to be contenders. They were 7-10 and 10 last year, and I think they're going to be very similar to that. I don't think that they are going to be a playoff team. Um, it seems like with the Bears, what happens is they're bad most of the time, and then they have that one year where they really explode and make their postseason run. That was the 2018 Bears with Matt Nagy. They had their elite defense. They had Mitch Trubisky. They had all that, and then they lost to the Eagles in the playoffs with the double doink. So that's the last time they made the playoffs and that they've been anything. I think Caleb Williams, based on what I've seen in preseason, I think he's going to be good. Uh, there was no doubt in my mind that he wasn't going to be great. And I think he has the potential of being like the Bears' um, like best quarterback. All he needs to th do is throw for 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns, and he's broken all Bears' rookie records. Or all the Bears' records, because no Bears quarterback has thrown for more than 30 touchdowns or 4,000 yards ever. So all Caleb Williams has to do is hit those two milestones, and he's automatically, by de facto, the best quarterback the Bears have ever had. But I'm afraid that his career is going to go the way of Matthew Stafford, or he's an extremely talented, above-average quarterback with great arm talent that's going to be wasted on a bad team. Um, that remains to be seen, though. We'll wait and see. Um, as for the Titans, I think the Titans are going to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. They are a team in disarray with no real direction. Now that Derrick Henry's gone, they replaced him with Tony Pollard, but the Titans don't have anything. I don't think Will Levis is really the future for them. 
They have some pieces on defense that are pretty good, but they don't have anything much really going for them. I think the Bears are going to walk away with this one. Um, it's going to be a good start for Caleb Williams. It's going to be a good start for this new rebuilding Bears team. But Matt Eberflus isn't their future. And um, they're going to get through this week against the Titans. But when they face a bit more difficult competition, I don't think they're going to do all that well. So next up, we have the uh, New England Patriots, 4-13, and at the Cincinnati Bengals, 9-8. and So... Not much to say about the Patriots. They're in full rebuild mode. They officially said that they are starting Jacoby Brissett, which I think is a dumb move. The Patriots know that they're not going to be good. Put Drake May in and just, like, see what he can do. Give him all the experience, all the reps that you can give him um, so he's better for next year. Um, you're not in a situation where you can do the Jordan Love situation where you have a good quarterback. You can still compete and you have him sit back and watch, and then when he's ready, you go. Get him that, that, that NFL experience while you can. Unless you think that you're gonna destroy his confidence and you're gonna have him see ghosts, then maybe it's better if you don't. May, uh, that's not actually a bad idea. I didn't think about that. That You might wanna do that. The Bengals, on the other hand, are a very interesting team because they finished nine and eight. Joe Burrow had his injury concerns. We haven't heard anything yet about Joe Burrow being injured, but he might not have Jamar Chase, which is another big problem. But what, what's interesting about the Bengals is ever since Joe Burrow has been around, he has struggled with being healthy. And something interesting that I noticed is 2020 and 2021, is that what it was? No, no, it was 2021 and 2022 were the two years that Joe Burrow was fully healthy. They made the Super Bowl and the conference championship back to back pretty much establishing them as perennial Super Bowl contenders. However, in those two years, Lamar Jackson was also injured. So we have yet to see a healthy Joe Burrow and a healthy Lamar Jackson fight for that division, which is really going to show me which of those teams is better, the Bengals or the Ravens, because right now that division is for either one of them. But if Joe Burrow can't stay healthy, um, it's going to be another lost year for the Bengals, which is what it was last year. In this game, I see the Bengals winning pretty handily. The Patriots are going to be one of the worst teams in the league. So I am going to go with the Bengals on that one. It's going to be pretty easy. They're really going to be challenged later on in the season when they face the Ravens twice a year. When they face, when they face the whole division, to be honest, because their whole division is difficult. So we will wait and see. But I'm going with the Bengals with this game. So next up, we have the Houston Texans, 10-7. At the Indianapolis Colts, nine and eight, um, the Colts were vying for a playoff spot all the way down until Week 18 when they lost. The Texans were the new. The Texans are the new hot team going into this year. They are like the Lions. They were like the Bengals a couple years ago. They were like the Bills in 2020. The Texans are the new hot team with a new hot quarterback, C.J. Stroud. They got Stephon Diggs. They have Joe Mixon at running back. They have a lot of pieces in place to go from one of the worst teams in the league two years ago to uh, vying for a Super Bowl. Fun fact, the Texans have still never reached a conference championship, so this would be a good chance for them to maybe finally break that streak. But they have to go through the Indianapolis Colts, which are going to be a very difficult team. They are um, in a very situ similar situation to a lot of teams where they have their franchise quarterback, and they're only going to go as far as Anthony Richardson takes them. It's the same with the Ravens. The Ravens are only going to go as far as Lamar Jackson takes them. Now, the fact that he got injured and had surgery on his throwing shoulder is very concerning to me because that is very hard to come back from. Remember, Cam Newton pretty much ended his career having surgery on his throwing shoulder. He was never the same again. Anthony Richardson is still young, but I think that the Colts are in a very tough situation where they are betting their future on this guy. The Colts, for the longest time, only employed um, part-time old veterans like Phillip Rivers, Carson Wentz, and Matt Ryan. They finally invested in a young quarterback to be their new franchise, which they still haven't recovered from since Andrew Luck shockingly retired a couple years ago. But this is going to be an interesting game because it's a divisional round matchup. It's in Indianapolis. I wouldn't be surprised if the Colts pulled off the upset um, but I think the Texans are too talented. They're going to be coming in with a lot of fire, a lot of momentum. I am still going to go with the Texans. I think the Texans are going to finish in a similar situation, 10-7 and 7 to 11-6. and 6. 
their, their expectations are Super Bowl or bust right now. So I'm going with the Texans. That is what they are trying to do, Super Bowl or bust. To do that, they're going to have to go over some good teams like the Indianapolis Colts are. So I'm going with the Texans. So next up, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars, 9-8 and eight at the Miami Dolphins, 11-6. and six. So with this game, the Jaguars have taken a step back since their 2022 season where they won a playoff game. Uh, Trevor Lawrence did not take that next step that everyone expected him, they expected him to do. He was okay, but he wasn't great. Now, when you have a generational talent like Trevor Lawrence drafted first overall, he needs to be better than good but not great. He is their new franchise quarterback, and this is a very, very important season for him. He can't throw as many interceptions and have as many turnovers as he's had, but the team is fully committed to him. He needs to take, take that extra step. It'll be interesting to see if he does. Now, as for the Miami Dolphins, the Dolphins are as good as Tua Tagovailoa can take them. Good, but not great. And again, Mr. Barry McCockiner, one of my favorite YouTubers, he says it best. Tua is a physically limited quarterback. He does not have the rocket arm like that a lot of these other players have. Now, that's okay. Drew Brees didn't have a rocket arm. A lot of other great quarterbacks don't have rocket arms. But Tua is a limited quarterback who puts up good stats. He led the league in passing yardage. But you have a team that could really benefit from a physically gifted quarterback because you have guys like Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill who can stretch the field. And um, Tua does not – he goes as far as he can take the Dolphins – they finished 11 and 6. They had a 100, they had a plus 100 point differential last year, which is the best point differential that the Dolphins have ever had since Dan Marino in the 1980s. So the Dolphins, in the regular season at least, have never been better in the last 35 years. Their big concern is getting it done in the postseason. They have gone out in the wild card around the last two years. They have they still have the longest playoff win drought of any team. They have not won a playoff game since the year 2000. It has been 22 years since the Dolphins have won a playoff game. And the only way I can see it happening with the Dolphins is if they go against an eight seed, sorry, not eight seed, if they go against a seven seed that just doesn't deserve to be there. They got there off of just random luck or the luck of the draw and the Dolphins beat another bad team but until the Dolphins until the Dolphins can beat a team that they are expected to lose against I'm not going to be impressed with them but I don't think the Jaguars are good enough to upset them at home so I am still going with the Dolphins but I got my eye on them and when they have to face teams like the Ravens um, or the Chiefs I think they're going to fold under pressure so next up we have the Carolina Panthers 2-15 at the New Orleans Saints, 9-8. and eight. So the Panthers are at rock bottom uh, when it comes to a franchise. David Tepper is the new Dan Snyder. Feels good to know that we don't have the worst owner in the league anymore. But they were 2-15. and 15. They have strapped a rocket to Bryce Young. I don't think Bryce Young is going to be their future. He's another physically limited quarterback who took way too many sacks last year. Um, they are going to be, they're going to be a similarly bad team to what they were last year the saints on the other hand are they finished nine and eight and they had like a, a plus 90 point differential so they were good on paper but the saints are in one of the worst situations a team can be in mediocrity hell they are mediocre from top to bottom and that is no more exemplified than having Derek carr as their quarterback who in my opinion is the best worst quarterback he is the best bad quarterback like that i can ask that you could ask for you know like i would much rather have a young guy that has the potential higher than Derek carr to like he's not he's not going to win you playoff games he's not going to take you to the super bowl and i think when he's done it in new orleans he's going to be on backup duty i believe um this is his last chance to really make some noise as a starter um, the, the Saints at New Orleans, they have a chance to win the division at least because their division is very weak. If there's, only, if there's any team that I think can sneak up on them, it's going to be the Falcons with Kirk Cousins. Um, if, 
if Kirk Cousins can't win this the easy of a division, maybe he's just as bad as Derek Carr. I don't know, but I'm going with the Saints. They're going to beat the Panthers pretty easily. So this next game is going to be very interesting because these two are probably going to be two of the worst teams in the league. We have the Minnesota Vikings at the New York Giants. The Vikings finished 7-10. and The Giants finished 6-11. and The Giants are in even worse position than the Saints because not only have they not started their rebuild, but they're not even a good team. The Saints are at least a mediocre team. The Giants are a bad team. I have never seen, I haven't been a football fan very long, I'm only 26 years old, but I have never seen a team hold on to a franchise quarterback that is as bad as Daniel Jones for this amount of time. They've had him, this is going into his sixth year as quarterback for the Giants. And even in 2022, when they were good and won a playoff game, Daniel Jones wasn't even that good. He threw like 15 touchdowns. You are not going anywhere with that. Them re-signing him to that contract was a bad idea. They needed to look at what they had, say, we made it by the skin of our teeth. We won a playoff game. We pretty much reached our ceiling with this team, but we're not going to get anywhere with Daniel Jones. And now he's tore his ACL. Like, the Giants are going nowhere this year, but neither are the Vikings. Because J.J. McCarthy, who was the guy that you were hoping to... Maybe they were going to do what the, what the Patriots did and have Sam Darnold start and then eventually move J.J. McCarthy into the starting role. But they can't even do that anymore because J.J. McCarthy is out for the season. So the Vikings really don't have anything to play for. Um, but Sam Darnold can maybe make a name for himself, comeback player of the year candidate maybe. Um, they still have Justin Jefferson. They traded away to Neil Hunter. The Vikings have started their rebuild, I think is how I would describe it. They don't really have many expectations, but they have fully started their rebuild, and that is a lot more than I can say for the Giants. Between the two of them, I'm going to go with the Vikings because I think the Giants are going to be one of the worst teams in the league. They're, one of the, they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league, but somehow they're still going to beat us twice. So I guess who has the last laugh, they do. So the Giants are going to lose, though. I'm going with the Vikings. So next up, we have the uh, Las Vegas Raiders at the LA Chargers. Raiders finished 8-9, and nine, Chargers finished 5-12. and 12. Interesting fact, the Raiders finished the season with a plus one point differential. Uh, they only had, they had scored one more point than the other team that scored against them, which I think is funny. And the Chargers, once again, had another lost season um, with Justin Herbert as their quarterback. The Chargers need to improve with Jim Harbaugh. They got a lot of uh, players from the Ravens. I think Jim Harbaugh is a very good coach, so I think that they will improve. It's just going to be like the Commanders, where it's how much are they going to improve. Um, the Raiders, they tanked their draft stock by winning some games later on in the season. They may say they were 8-9. and nine. They were not an 8-9 and nine team. They are fielding either Gardner Minshew or Aiden O'Connell as their quarterback, and you are not winning a single thing with either one of those guys playing quarterback. They dropped Josh Jacobs. Poor Devontae Adams is in the black hole, which Randy Moss could probably tell him a little bit about. The Raiders are not going to be a good team. The Chargers are on the come up. I am going to go with the Chargers on this one. They are going to come out like a house of fire. They are going to show us what Jim Harbaugh has done to the team, and I think they're going to be a lot better. They're still not going to be much for the Chiefs, but they're going to be a lot better. Maybe can buy for a wild card spot if their team is really significantly better. So next up, we have the Denver Broncos, 8-9, and nine, at the Seattle Seahawks, 9-8. and eight. So the Broncos are still reeling from losing Peyton Manning in 2015. They have not made the playoffs since then. And not, all, not only have they not made the playoffs, they haven't even been a good team. They have made, well, the Russell Wilson trade, historically, is probably going to be known as one of the worst trades of all time. They sold the house to get him. They had Nathaniel Hackett as their head coach because they thought they could steal Aaron Rodgers, which is a very, very dumb move by ownership. It seems like the Broncos' ownership isn't even that good to begin with as well. So that's pretty lame. The Seahawks are a pretty mediocre franchise a la the New Orleans Saints. They lost Pete Carroll. They're trying to navigate the Russell Wilson era, the after Russell Wilson era. That seems to be what happens when these really good teams that have been good for a long period of time they lose their head coach or they lose their quarterback, and they're just trying to fight for an identity. Um, I think Geno Smith is going to be benched at some point. 
And uh, the interesting thing is, I am interested to see if the Seahawks run with Sam Howell. I think he's good enough to be their starter. If Geno Smith starts shit in the bed and Sam Howell comes in, I think he's going to play very well. I am still a, I'm still a big Sam Howell guy. He was in a very, very bad situation with Washington. I think it couldn't have hurt for us to keep him, but we had the opportunity to get someone with a higher ceiling than Sam Howell, which is what Jane Daniels is. So I can't say I blame them for making the decision that they did. We managed to get a third round pick out of him, which is a positive when how we drafted him. But I would not sleep on the Seahawks and Sam Howell. I think the Seahawks are going to win this game, and they're going to get off to a good 1-0 start. So now we take it to another 4 o'clock game. We're nearing the end here. We have the Dallas Cowboys, 12-5, at the Cleveland Browns, 11-6. We live in a wonderful time where the Dallas Cowboys are the biggest joke of a franchise ever. They are a phenomenal regular season team. They had like a point, they had like a plus 190 point differential last year. They have had 13 wins in the last three years, but they keep shitting the bed in the playoffs in the most hilarious ways. They lost to San Francisco in that one game where Dak ran and slid and they ran out of time. This one, they just got embarrassed embarrassed by the Green Bay Packers. They didn't even show up. So the way the way I always describe the Dallas Cowboys are they are bullies. They beat up on bad teams, so everyone thinks they're all good. But when they face a team on their caliber, they fold under pressure. This is going to be an example of that, where the Cowboys beat up on a team that they should beat up on, the Cleveland Browns, who are still struggling with their quarterback, um, and they're going to win. So I'm giving you my prediction early there. As for Cleveland, they have managed to backdoor themselves into the playoffs last year um, despite abysmal quarterback play. Joe Flacco had his little Lynn Sanity era at 38 years old, but now they have Deshaun Watson, Jameis Winston, and Tyler Huntley on the quarterback roster, and I don't really like the chance of any of them. Deshaun Watson has miraculously forgotten how to play football, and I think it is incredible how that has happened. I guess that's what guaranteed money does to you, but this has got to be his absolute last chance to do something with this team or else they're going to bench him because he's not going to take them anywhere if he keeps playing the way that he's playing or he continues to get injured. So I think the Cowboys are going to win this game. I don't know how the Browns managed to get 11 wins last year, but they have got to figure out the quarterback situation or else they are not going anywhere. And now it comes to our Sunday night game. We have the Los Angeles Rams, 10-7, at the Detroit Lions, 12-5. We have Jared Goff versus, versus Matthew Stafford facing off once again. Um, what we're looking at now is one of the most mutually beneficial trades for each party. The Rams got a Super Bowl win, and the Lions won their first playoff game since 1990. They made it to the conference championship, and they were a half of football away from making it to the Super Bowl, and the Lions choked the game away. Now, people are still expecting them to be a pretty good team. I think they will be too if they stay healthy and they keep up the good work. As for the Rams, if Matthew Stafford can stay healthy, I see no reason why they can't also be an 11 or 12 win team. Um, when Stafford is healthy, this team does well. I think, Puka, I think Puka Nakua is gonna make a huge step up as well and really establish himself as one of the best wide receivers in the league. Because when I saw him play, that guy has talent. He has it. Um, when I watched him play against the Ravens, making making catches with no gloves, like that's a talented guy. I think as long as the Rams have Sean McVay, they will be okay. They have quietly gone to two Super Bowls in the last seven years because they obviously won in 2021, but people forget that they also made the Super Bowl in 2018 with Sean McVay's uh, first year coaching, second year coaching them. So... They will be successful with Sean McVay. The Rams are always going to be a team to look out for if they have Matt Stafford um, and they have the weapons on offense and they have the strong defense. What will they do without Aaron Donald remains to be seen. But this is going to be a great game. I'm glad it's on Sunday night. It's going to be a great game. I This is going to be very, very tough, but I am going to go with the home team. I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions. They have a lot to prove, and they are going to, they're going to, they're going to do it. Like, I think they have a lot to prove, and I think they're going to beat the Rams. I think it's, I think it's going to be a great game. So last but not least, we have our Monday night game. We have the New York Jets, 7-10, and 10, 
at the San Francisco 49ers, 12 and 5. So both of these teams have their own little storylines. The Jets. The Jets are completely dependent on how well Aaron Rodgers can play at 40 years old. I've seen him in practice, and he can still sling the ball 50, 60 yards, so his arm talent isn't the issue. I think he's going to be pretty darn good. I think everyone thinks that he's going to fall off, but I don't understand why people keep forgetting that in 2022, Aaron Rodgers played with a broken thumb for multiple games, which is why he didn't do as well as he usually does. I think we're in the cards for a Aaron Rodgers comeback season, comeback player of the year season potentially. Um, and if the Jets can, if the Jets can get seven wins with with um, Zach Wilson as their quarterback, the sky is the limit for them. I think that they can make um, a really strong playoff run if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy. But that's a big if. He's 40 years old. I think a lot of people have forgotten what it's like to play with a 40-year-old quarterback after seeing Tom Brady do what he did. Not every quarterback at 40 years old is going to be able to throw the football 700 times like Brady did. Drew Brees played well at age 40 and 41, but he missed games. He couldn't stay healthy. Brett Favre played well at the age of 40, and then 41, the wheels fell out from under him. So we are in uncharted waters here, or very rarely charted waters. Um, Tom Brady is an exception, not the standard. So Aaron Rodgers has a chance to build his own standard here by being one of the few quarterbacks to be uh, productive in their age 40 season. The 49ers, on the other hand, are like a bigger, higher-stakes version of the Cowboys. They are one of the worst playoff chokers I've ever seen. So in these last five years, they have made the conference championship four out of five times. And they made it to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl two times. And they have no championships to show for it. And this is only going to get worse for them when they have to start paying Brock Purdy. He's still on his rookie-scale contract, but if he keeps playing at this level, he's going to ask for a lot of money, and that's going to take away from the rest of their roster. The, the, the 49ers have so many stars on their team. They're the most loaded roster in the NFL, which is why they're in win-now mode. They cannot afford to blow it in the Super Bowl again like they did with the Kansas City Chiefs last year or in 2019 when they were up by 10 points in the fourth quarter and the Chiefs came back and won. They need to get their championship ring. They, uh, they got to do it. Um, in this game, uh, it's going to be very interesting to see just how well Aaron Rodgers plays, but the 49ers are the defending NFC champions. They are not going to lose in week one. I think it's going to be a very good game, but I do think the 49ers are going to win. Whew. So that was a bit of a long video, guys. Week one predictions are in the books. I can't wait for Thursday for opening day, and I especially can't wait for Sunday for NFL Red Zone and watching all these games at once. Football is back, baby, and I will see you guys again next week. I hope you all have a great rest of your week, and I hope you enjoy all your games. Root for the team you want to root for. Let's hope the Commanders get a week one victory. I very much doubt it, but I hope so. I'll see everyone later.